Hello everyone, this is Nick back with Black Lightning Robotics and welcome to our second Design Peaks video. Today we've got your favorite Beetleweight Phantom 2 in our CAD setup here. Quick piece of context about this model, ignore the model name. I thought when I was designing this last year that this was going to become Phantom 3, but as more and more things evolved, it just ended up being a frame rebuild for Phantom 2 that we did over the summer. So there are just a couple artifacts in here from that major redesign that we didn't end up doing and that aren't going to be something we're doing in the near future. They are things I would like to do eventually. So a couple of those things are, first of all, this big central battery here. Uh, we want to, right now we've got four small batteries in the, in the wheel wells. We want to switch to one big central battery, but that's going to require some rewiring and some part modification that we don't have time for at the moment. Another thing is these pulleys on the wheels. We'd eventually want to belt all four wheels together. That'll give us uh, more drive power when we're inverted. And eventually in the future we want to switch to some other kind of drive motor so that that'll be more conducive for that. But those are eventual things. Those are not what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about some upgrades that we're going to do in the near future for Phantom 2. Uh, that we want to have hopefully by the next event. So, this is kind of a look at how it competed at the Motor City Massacre event last month. And this was also the frame rebuild from before Cirque. And uh, what we've got, first of all, there are, there's the AR-500 weapon bar that we used at Motor City Massacre. And uh, that's 11 inches long, 3 16th inch AR-500. It's really nice. Also, there's this big wedge up front. That's .08 inch thick, uh, 4130 steel that's been hardened up for us. And uh, that's been really effective for us as well. The wedge is shock mounted. Uh, there are rubber spacers in between this wedge. And then there's a support plate behind the wedge um, that it's mounted to and there are rubber washers in between this plate and the nuts behind it so that the wedge can uh, vibrate in, in both directions. But that brings us to the first upgrade we want to make. So before Cirque back in August, we rebuilt the whole frame and some of you who follow us know that Phantom 2 used to have some forks in the front and those forks were really useful for getting under other wedges and under vertical spinners. But the reason we got rid of them is because we knew we had to fight Animus at Central Illinois Bot Brawl and we didn't want to go up against him with forks. Now we did have a wedge on the old frame. It wasn't the greatest thing. We, we did swap it in a few times, but we really wanted to focus on this nice new wedge because we wanted the frame to be integral. The forks used to allow the side rails to just get blown off if they got hit. So uh, a front wedge that's mounted to all four rails provides a bit of support that the forks really don't. And then we just ran out of time to integrate forks into the new frame because we went so overboard with this wedge. But we do want to go forward and, and reintegrate the forks back into this design and have them be kind of modular. We want to switch between the wedge and the forks depending on who we're fighting. So uh, the most the, the first part of this whole thing is this fork bracket. This is gonna be 3D printed out of Onyx, and it's gonna kinda of clamp underneath this top panel support for the weapon. And then it's also gonna have a couple of shoulder bolts that are gonna go through this rail here and through the other side, and there's gonna be a nut embedded here that they'll bolt into, and that will have, those shoulder bolts will have forks on them, and um, those that, that'll kinda of hold that secure. So that is going to hold the forks in with those shoulder bolts and then a common axle for the other two forks embedded in this part. And then the outer forks are going to be mounted with shoulder bolts to the outer rails. Now one thing that we struggled with with the fork configuration before was how to get the forks to not fold up into the weapon. Uh, we had a couple of screw heads in the rails that would kind of prevent that, but we had a few times where those screw heads sheared and that did allow the forks to fold beyond where they were supposed to, and that was a big problem for us. So we were kind of wary of the forks against big weaponed robots, and that kind of defeated their purpose, except for when we were fighting wedges. To help out with that, we're gonna have this new plate in the front, kind of, we call it the fork wedge. And what that's gonna do is, A, it's gonna help support that fork bracket behind it, hold that in. It's gonna mount to the rails and the, the fork bracket will also help support this. So that's gonna be kind of helpful in the front. It'll add a lot of structural integrity to the four rails, uh, like we were talking about before. It won't allow those side rails to fly off so easily, and that'll be a big help to us. 
It's also going to provide some front armor, and then it will also limit the fork motion. So what's going to happen is when these forks hinge, um, you know, you want them to be able to hinge so they can scrape the ground properly. It's going to limit, the fork is going to hit the underside of this tab here, or the, you know, the underside of the gaps in the middle. And that's going to prevent it from swinging down too far, and then in the other direction, you can see that the, here's the edge where that will hit. And the other direction, that's going to help it not fold up into the weapon. You got the weapon up here, so that's going to be quite helpful for these things. The next thing we want to do is we want to have, you know, a few different weapon bars here. So right now this one is, is the more conservative uh, AR-500 bar. It's got the flat tips. It's supposed to be as durable as possible. We've also got this hooked AR-500 bar for digging into wedge bots. So that'll be helpful for, for fighting wedges. We've got this new 4130 uh, steel bar that's a bit thinner and a bit longer with these narrow tips. So this will not have that much energy stored because the tips are so narrow, so that's not a ton of weight out at the ends. It is a little bit longer, and so that'll give it some more reach. That'll be helpful for fighting horizontal spinners. We can try to snipe out their belt or hit some wheels, or um, and then with the wedge, that's who we'll use the big wedge against. Uh, we'll, we'll get rid of this, we'll take off this fork configuration and put the wedge back on and uh, run with this bar against those horizontal spinners. There's also this D2 tool steel bar that was gifted to us by our, our heat treat friend who, who's been doing the heat treats for us. We're a little bit concerned that D2 tool steel isn't as tough as some others like S7, but you know what, it was a gift, so we wanna we wanna use it and make our make our friend happy with that. Last but not least, there's this impactor bar. Now Phantom 2 did have an impact impactor bar before but it did have some manufacturing issues that kind of hurt it and um, eventually it became unusable as it got damaged. So we want to make a new one, we want to reuse the hardened steel teeth, get a new aluminum bar here. That'll be for just storing up as much energy and hitting as hard as we can. And it does have some gyro issues, but you know what, that'll, that'll be a lot of fun to compete with that bar. The other things we want to do are uh, some things that'll help us when we've been flipped over. So there's a couple things we want to try. First off, we want to try some kind of caster on top. So those of you who don't know, Phantom 2 can drive upside down. Even without this, this caster, uh, it can drive along its back wheels and, and along the weapon axle, and it has some degree of inverted motion. It's not very useful because we can't self-right, so that's uh, kind of what this is for. Uh, sometimes it does struggle with traction on the back wheels, so this is to kind of move, the center of mass is like down in here in the frame, so normally with the ground runs along from here to the weapon axle top, uh, the center of mass is kind of like right up in here, and so it's kind of a little bit more toward the weapon axle than it is toward these wheels, and so having the ground go from these wheels to this caster, the center of mass is going to be a little bit more uh, toward these wheels, these back wheels, there'll be more weight on them, and hopefully there'll be a little bit more traction. Now I don't know if this is going to be able to self right on the wall, with how tall this is, my sense is no, but it might help us, uh, you know, gain a little bit more mobility. And you know what, maybe this front fork wedge will be good at absorbing impacts if we do want to drive head first into a vertical spinner that flipped us and flip us back over. Uh, who knows with that, but that's, you know, just something easy and 3D printed to try. The other thing to try is the Orb of Shame. Now we did try this once before the Toronto tournament this past summer and it did actually work. It self-righted the robot. It looks kind of silly, but it did work. The problem is, these spring steel hoops are really flexible, and we were afraid that they would flex down into the weapon, and that that would just mangle everything or seize our weapon and be really embarrassing. This robot is self-destructive enough as it is, so we did not want to deal with that. But now we've had the idea, we're, we've re revisiting the idea with this 3D printed support bracket thing that just kind of mounts over. There's going to be a hub here that'll attach to these, and this bracket will, will hopefully help prevent these spring steel hoops from folding down into the weapon. At least in most cases, I mean, it, it will still be possible. It's our hope that there's a lot lower chance with this support bracket here, and hopefully that will help us to stop losing to wedges by flipping over. Um, now obviously this does 
leave us susceptible to something like a de-icer, something to kind of go over the weapon and hold our robot back so it can't hit the opponent. But it, just one set screw hub will hold this onto the weapon shaft. And actually, this, this won't spin actually, because we do have a dead axle. But that set screw hub is easily removable using the same Allen key that we used to turn on the robot. So if we get to the arena, we see a de-icer, we can just take this off. And, you know, if they invested a lot of time and they were banking on a de-icer to keep us at bay, that's going to be a problem for them. So yeah, those are the modifications we want to make to Phantom 2 in the near future. Uh, let us know what you think of these. Uh, do you think this looks dorky? Do you think it'll be worth it? Um, what do you think of the new fork wedge? What do you think of the different weapon bars? And what do you think of this style of video? Uh, I know we did this with, with Spooky, we're doing this with Phantom. I want to do another one with Tirade, because you guys haven't seen much of that one. I also want to do some breakdowns of those robots, actually like taking them apart and showing you how they're built in, in real life. I don't have the best camera equipment, so let me know if you want to see that, if it's not going to look the greatest. And we're also going to be building our new 150 gram robot Spooky that was featured in the last video soon, so there will be some build updates for that. We're going to also experiment with some new like recap style videos from, from the tournaments we've been to, tell some fun stories about those. So yeah, we've got a lot of content that we want to to make here, so let us know what you think of that, and uh, feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, as always, happy roboting!